Hello. Yes. Oh, hi. Is this Joey Belladonna? This is. Hey, man, this is uh, Levi calling from Sticks of Stones in Brisbane, Australia. How are you, man? Great. How are you down under there? Yeah, good, man. You know, I was just thinking the other day about the last time I saw Anthrax, and I think it was uh, Soundwave 2013. It was a really That's good right. show. Uh, how did it go for you? That was a great did you enjoy the tour? Yeah. I like that because, you know, we flew it. Well, we always fly all the time we're there, you know. But we mm-hmm. also had a, a very hot. It was fucking wicked, wicked hot, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, that uh, festival, I don't know if you've been following it, but it uh, doesn't exist anymore. And I think what happened is uh, last, the last sound wave, he uh, you know, overshot his mark a bit and couldn't afford to pay all the bands. But did you have any problem with anything like that when uh, you did sound wave? I don't remember any problems, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't recall anything going wrong. Oh, okay, it was hot. Yeah. That's all I know. Deck, the deck <laughs> yeah. was wicked hot. I mean, even my shoes were standing on stage. It was burning. It was wicked. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. And I rem- remember you closed with uh, TNT, and that was just absolutely killer. I loved it, man. Yeah, it was a good one, huh? Yeah. Um, I got sent Can't a go wrong, copy of your new album, and I've got to say it. I could almost say it's the best Anthrax album yet, man. I love it. It's uh, good stuff. It uh, follows on perfectly from worship music. How did the whole recording process go? And I know you got a new guitarist as well. Uh, how did, how, did he contribute a lot to the album as well? The uh, process is kind of the same, really. We go in and do the drums. You know, we did about eight drums at one shot, and then you know do the guitars and the bass and finish that, and then go in and sing a little bit to those. Um, and then do another batch eight. We don't do them all at once, you know, kind of take them in parts so you're just yeah. not so crammed and, you know, we get a little chance to sit back and take a minute with it. The vocals were the same idea. I go in the studio with uh, the producer, Jay, and uh, we, we just uh, had a nice evening each night doing a song, and it's very easy to do it because there's no one around, and it's nice and peaceful, and it's very, very open for interpretation. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot more uh, adventurous for me to go in there with no one in there because I can at least try to do stuff that I wouldn't, you know, I feel comfortable trying on my own without anybody going, oh, where are you going with that? You know, that is not going to be good. So you get that kind of feel, and I just, I'd like to have a little chance to try it try things, you know, without really having someone stop you in the middle of it, you know, where you didn't even get a chance to even do it and go, fuck, that was really good. I didn't realize that that would have been, you know, would have been great to do, you know. Yeah, and vocally, you the same process. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sorry, what were you saying? Well, I was going to address John. John came in and did the leads, really, I mean, you know, with some help with, uh, with a few guys and, and, you know, just working together with him and making sure that uh, that, that you know the, is the best the best kind of version of a solo. You know, you take parts and say yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Maybe change that. But he fits really well. John is a, he's got a good style. And it's suitable for what we're doing. You know, it's it's it fits right in. It's real sharp, tasteful. Yeah, no, I really like it and it gives a bit of a modern sound because I really like the work he did with uh, Shadows Fall as well, which was cool. Uh, your voice, your sure, vocals. Right. Your vocal sound as good as ever. Uh, how do you keep your voice in check? Are you doing, you know, vocal exercises and things like that? No, I, I, I mean, the only thing I do other than Anthrax, I have a cover band, and we, we just we play out four hours straight. It's all classic rock stuff, you know, like Rush, Zeppelin, yeah. Triumph, Deep Purple, Rush, you know, Boston, you know, that kind of higher, you know, good, good, uh, calisthenic kind of vocal for me. And, and you know, I do all kinds of different styles, and it's, I guess I guess that's that's my uh, workout, if you will, but I don't do it for that. I, I do it because I like to play drums and sing and, and make music, but uh, I don't know. I just, I've been digging in a little harder. I've been just working at it as well as I can just to make sure that I, that I sing well, you know, I, I, I try harder at all times to, to make it really that awesome, you know, I, I, I'm saying when I'm doing the record, I, and again, I don't have a lot of opportunities with some of the songs, because they're really, I'm really stuck in a, 
in a spot, but you have to make something arise from it. You really have to make 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 it work. So that's what we do in the studios is try to find a good place and time to make stuff shine, you know, and that's what that's what I like to do is Again, and that's it's nice that I don't have again anyone around. I can try some things that may have never even had a chance, you know. Mm. Yeah, and I know uh, Anthrax were always uh, pretty close with the guys from Motorhead, and you know it's cool watching the memorial, just hearing all the different stories about Lemmy, and you know everyone's got something interesting to tell. And I'm just wondering, is there any you know highlight moments that you have from your time knowing Lemmy Kilmeister? Well, we, I even toured in 95 with him on my own. Yeah. We did a tour, like, you know, and we spent time together a lot. I saw him a lot during the day, talked a lot. Um, I remember meeting him for the first time on a bus. He's a, one of the real guys goes, yeah, let me in the back of the bus. He wants you to come and uh, say hi and, you know, first time um, really sitting down and talk with him. And he's just for real, you know. The guy lived every moment of it, and he was just... Uh, it was just awesome as a metal I don't know it's just hard to really say it's just he was the guy you know he was who he was uh, and there's no there wasn't very many people that were as cool as him and uh, he sure lived it lived it without any mistake you know oh yeah it's really a legend you know he's, he's sorely missed like it, like a lot of people lately you know just seeing people pass some people not necessarily um, it's a hell, a hell of a life, you know, if you're not running, running with all the cylinders going at once, but that's sad, you know, I, I love to, and we just did the motorboat together a couple of years now, we did a tour in Europe together, and spent many uh, good moments, yeah. the whole crew, the whole, the whole organization, my management is part of his management, I love all those guys and how they helped him and ran him successfully, you know, just everything about it. Yeah, for sure, man. Now, it's funny, I've been a bit uh, conflicted at the moment. Uh, one of my favorite bands of all time, Pantera, came out and did that whole, uh, old school and similar, did that white power thing, and even Scott released a statement saying he was uh, pretty disappointed with it. You think he should be forgiven? Because I don't know what myself like. I still want to listen to Pantera, and I don't want to let that one thing, you know, affect you know, my love for that music. Uh, what's your, your your thoughts on that? I, I honestly, I don't, I don't even know the whole theme of it all. I just, I know, I try to stay away from stuff like that because I don't live, I don't live with that kind of thought of anything in particular. I don't judge. Yeah. I, I just stay clear from anything like that. I don't, it doesn't change my thought of the music, you know. Yeah. I, I know people that don't like a band because they don't, they the person in that band could be the coolest person, but if you don't like the music, you, you see that people hate the whole thing. It's so crazy, you know, because I've, I've met people in bands that you know, might not have liked the music, and I said, man, those are the coolest people. So, I don't know, I just stay away from all that stuff. I don't, I, I, don't, I can't, I, I don't even know where to start with that. I try to stay out of it, you know. I don't know why, I just, I, I got enough going on to even, like, try to interject with that. I mean, and I mean, if you have some feelings, I just kind of leave it to myself. I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I don't go that far. I, I try to really keep a limit on what I'm, where I'm going with things. Yeah, fair call. It's uh, never good, you know, yeah, I just build up in all that sort of media hype. Yeah. I mean, um, it's good yeah. banter, I guess, for certain people. Uh, and that's yeah. Me. I don't know why. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> now, as we were saying uh, just earlier, last time you were here was uh, 2013 for Soundwave. Is there any plans to come back to Australia soon? Because I'd love to see you guys play. I've only ever seen you play festival shows, so I haven't seen the full two-hour set yet. Well, you know, there's there's talk about, you know, eventually going there. It's just a matter of, like, who's going to put on an event that we would tar participate in. You know, right now, I, you hear... You hear possibilities but nothing specific and you know it's a long trip too so it certainly has to be something that we're gonna gonna take on you know it's a full run you know I, I would hope there's more demand for us there for something I mean I know we've done tours there like mm. clubs uh, mini theater whatever those would be fine with me too it doesn't mean there have to be a festival but yeah I guess I don't know We'll wait and see, I guess, you know. We've got Maiden coming up, 
South yep. America. We got all our European outdoor festivals coming up, and you know we got some one-offs in the states in April, May, and then you know May, May through July and August is all Europe. So that that that'll be uh, quite a bit of stuff going on until then. So we wouldn't definitely be over there anytime before that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know looking, now. looking back on all the uh, shows you've played, uh, what do you think has been the biggest Anthrax show you've ever done? Was it probably the Big Four? Like, how big was that at the time? Because I missed that. But uh, it just must have been a gigantic crowd. Yeah, those were quite big. Uh, every show uh, was great because it's just a, a hell of a uh, Metallica just put on a great, great thing. They just really, really made it fun for everybody and it was just well run and, and, and great company the bands everybody together we all know each other and it was a really nice to be in company with all that and uh, you know I, I wish we could do more actually I, i'd love to see that it was a great package you know yeah when you're playing a stadium compared to a club show do you get more nervous with the bigger crowds i don't uh like tonight we're playing a we got a headline show tonight on the slam of god tour and It's uh, I don't know, seven hundred to a thousand. It's yeah. just great. It's it's very intimate. Uh, the vibe is is fun. I I don't mind it. I play small clubs when I play my other band. God, I mean, we're you know in a, in a house of a hundred people, and and I'm I'm in a corner, and I ain't getting out of my drums. And once I get in, I'm done. I can't even get out. I'm stuck. So I don't really care. I I, I you know obviously the big shows are. You, it's so far out. You really gotta. You think you have to keep projecting, but just keep it the same. You know, I, I don't. I, I try to really just take out everything as the same. So I don't really lose my thoughts. I just kind of keep keep it keep it neutral. Um, and I'm real more relaxed about the whole thing now. You know, because I just yeah. focus on the music. Really, I don't. I don't think about. Oh my God, you know. I don't get even as nervous. I don't, you know, you get that happy nervous, but no, I don't even get that anymore as much. I, I, because I've learned to really just, just take it as it comes, you know. Yeah, and I uh, feel positive. Talk, like, you know. mm. As we we're talking just before about Lemmy Kilmeister again, that you know he pushed on right till the end. He had a walking cane and he played all the way up until he was seventy. Do you think you were going to push on that far? What's that? Uh, do you think you'll be able to push on? Do you think you'll uh, keep doing it as long as Lemmy did it? I don't see why not. I mean, I, I got all kinds of things I could do. It doesn't. Maybe it maybe it doesn't have to be thrash. I mean, I I, I plan to have a just a fun time singing. It'll be something with a vocal. It could be contemporary. It could be something. Yeah, I mean, I. I'll do something, you know. I mean, maybe if Anthrax wants to continue, sure, we can do it too. I mean, I don't, uh, there's a new generation of people that want to hear this stuff. So, you know, if we want to keep doing it, we feel hungry about it, we do it. You know, why not? I see a lot of people. We have Jagger, mm. yeah, Daltrey, all, all those guys, Halford, all these guys. Are, I mean, even Dio would be still doing it. You know he would be. Oh, yes. I'll guarantee sure. it. Is it, you know, still a struggle on the road for you? Does it uh, knock you out more when once you've gotten older? Is it, you know, a hard lifestyle? You know, it isn't. Um, I, I, I definitely take on every moment of the right the right task of, of doing what I need to do. I'm very focused. Uh, it's it's a, it's it's a it's a thing that you need to do. You need to, to run it the way you feel right about it. I get the right, you know, I'm trying to get as much sleep as I can, pace myself, and um, I, don't, I don't, I mean, it's hard enough, really, there's no doubt. It's not regular, you know. Uh, I try to make it regular, but it's not. Uh, it's not like at home. You know, you can take a minute. I mean, there is breaks, too, but we're rolling all day long here versus at home. You, you can really just shut it down at a time. But here, you, you can't really shut it down too much because it's all day, all night. Um, yeah. But I, I, you know what? I've, I've learned to work it much better than I've ever done it. So I, I, that's all I can ask right now. That's all I, can, that's all I got, you know, to, to make it right. So 
but it's yeah. definitely pacing. Pacing is a, a real, real major thing, you know. Yeah, for sure. And I remember, like, the first few times I was ever allowed to come backstage, I always expected it to be drugs and groupies every, everywhere, but it was actually pretty tame. It was mostly just, you know, band members looking on their phone and stuff like that. Uh, you think uh, rock and roll's a bit more tame with the backstage and the partying these days than it was, say, you know, when you started in the 80s? Yeah, for us, yeah, for sure. There's no doubt about <laughs> it. Man. Yeah. But but that's, that's, we know better, you know. It, it, it's... You can't you can't fight that. It it really isn't any good anyhow. I mean, I've I've had fun being a part of all of it, but mm. at this point in time, I I, I I I can't can't afford any of that kind of thing. It's just not. I mean, literally, <laughs> can't be, yeah. can't do it. Just can't do it. I mean, I I, I know people do, and I watch people I still to this day. I, right now, at this moment, I'll see people do it, but it just can't. It doesn't work for me. I can't. I can't do it. And people do yeah. it. God bless them, but I can't. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I know. I only got 20 minutes. Left. I'll ask you one more question. You've got the presidential elections coming up, and it feels like you've got two people that are like the polar opposite of each other. You know, are you worried about one or the other winning? No, I'm letting it roll. I, I, it's just so hard, man. I'm confused at some points, and I don't, I don't really know what anybody's going to do. Yeah. And you know what? Once they get in. It's up to them, and who knows if they're even going to be able to do something they say they're going to do in the first place. You know, look at Obama. He had to go in there, and he had to fix stuff, and he tried, and he did some good stuff, but then yet, still unfinished, right? I don't know. Yeah. It's up for grabs, man. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. very entertaining. That's oh, for sure. We can't, yeah, that's can't sure. deny that. It may even get more entertaining. <laughs> yeah, well, sure. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. It always is. Absolutely, man. Yeah, well, it's uh, been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. I mean, one of my heroes, one of the reasons I picked up guitar was, you know, listening to Anthrax's music. So big thanks for that. Well, thank you. Thank and, you very uh, much. Yeah, Appreciate if you it. come welcome. down to Australia, I'll be up in the front row. I'll probably be taking some photos as well. So it'll be awesome to catch you guys sometime in oh, the next year or two. Good deal. Well, hopefully we'll be there soon. I will definitely I'll keep you in mind, you know. I know that some people are waiting for us to come back over there. Yeah, cool, lads, man. We'll enjoy the rest of your interviews and your day. You bet, man. Cheers. Okay, bye, Joe.